make sure you watch all the way because there's a few new things on this big horn that I don't think has been shown on any other videos. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony and this is Tony's Tractor Adventure. Tanya's behind the camera, so give her a big uh, thumbs up and a, a little comment saying, hey, I appreciate you making this video because she's out here freezing her, took us off to make this video. And we are in a different season of our life. Uh, I don't care to go 80 miles an hour on a side-by-side -side through the desert. I want a side-by-side -side that will work uh, and also play a little bit. This side-by-side -side has got a it, it, it's got a little, it'll do a little bit of it all. And it comes completely accessorized from the factory other than the cab. The cab is the only thing that is optional. Uh, it actually, I think the new ones actually come with heat standard. And then you, uh, you can add the cab on at a later time. I'd like to thank Joe the farmer for turning us on to the Bighorn UTV. We've been watching his channel and he's a wealth of knowledge. If you haven't seen his channel, I'm gonna leave a link at the end of this video so you can go check him out. He is so knowledgeable on all things Bighorn. I know I'm gonna get this question is like, where are you gonna get this serviced at? Uh, you, these are so, Bighorn is sold not only by Tractor Supply, but they're also sold by local dealers. I went on to the Bighorn site and looked up for service and a dealer locator and with, within uh, 30 minutes of me, there's five uh, dealers that actually sell and service these. So there are actually people you can talk to to get serviced, unlike some other box store brands. So Bighorn not only does sell through Tractor Supply, but they also have a dealer network as well, which is an added benefit. Look there. I'm making her do the camera work. She's all bundled <laughs> up. I'm gonna, hey, this thing's got heater in it, so I'm gonna be riding around in the heat. I am wearing a snowsuit. Look at so that. I stay nice and warm. Things I do for video. Things for a YouTuber life. All right, let's kind of show you around this thing. Uh, it is a, obviously it's got a dump bed and it's just that easy. It's got a cist, uh, cylinder over there on that side. It's got a 500 cc, roughly it's like 497 or something. 500 cc, we'll round up 500 cc electronic fuel injection. You can hear the snow and ice dripping on the exhaust. <laughs> anyway, I like that. One thing I noticed right off the bat when I went top it off with fuel is that it has a, a steel tank like you would find on a piece of heavy equipment like this this is a the cap is steel the tank is steel uh it's very very heavily heavily built the windows will open up the door has a uh, two windows that you can just open up in the front or the back and then also these windows will come out during the summer or you can so understanding that you could probably take this top piece off of the door if you want to uh, we'll just have to see. It is laid out like a, uh, like a car. Let's go ahead and sit in here. It's big enough that I can go across. And we've got our camera gear. I've got a bunch of, again, the life of the YouTuber. It's got the little drink holder here, which is also... Camera stand. <laughs> which is also, what well, you know, can be put up and you can have like a... A little small person ride with you. Gizmo person. I don't know if Gizmo's gonna ever get in this one. I'm sure he will, but it's got a phone holder. And then it's got a big glove box. It's waterproof like that. Big nice glove box. I don't know if it's waterproof, but it's not gonna splash in there. Um and again it's got heat. I love the heat part. All right, it's got tilt steering, pull the lever and go up and down. It's got a little cylinder. See it'll go way down like that. But right there's about right for me. And then parking brakes over here, you push it with your foot. When you want to release the parking brake, push that and it'll roll. Yeah, get us off the hill a little bit. So I'm five foot nine and there's, I mean, you could be a seven foot tall person in here. It's massive. There's a lot of room. A lot of, matter of fact, you can almost like put a rack or something. We may do that where we like put a rack or something up here. We can put stuff up in. Yeah. No, that means you have to keep a whole bunch of junk in there. We're not doing I that. like junk. All right, so... It's got 
four wheel drive, two wheel drive, this is two wheel drive, this is four wheel drive, this is four wheel drive lock, and then you can lock your rear differential by turning this on. So right now we're just gonna go to regular two wheel drive, four ways. Anyway, so your heater button over here. You go ahead and grab that for me. So here's your heater button, you turn this on for heat. You got your, like your no lights, one click is just the running lights. That's be your, your like your marker lights on the front, marker lights on the back, and then the front will be like a daytime running light. And uh, then when you click this one over, it goes over to the high beam. I think this is low beam, and then this is high beam. And then we turn this all the way off. All the lights go off. Doesn't matter where the switch is at. And then the winch in and out. It's just like it sounds. It works. It works really good. Uh, I've already used it to tighten it. You know, put put it on the trailer and tighten it down. I have never blown the horn. No, I have. Honk, honk. All right, let's jump out and I'll show you under the hood. Right here's the hood latch. Now, I also want to point out, like, you've got all these little cubbies. There's cubbies everywhere. We're going to pull this hood and show you up under the hood. I look at everything through a mechanic's lens because I've been in maintenance my whole entire career. So that's the way I perceive everything. Uh, now, this has got a battery that's kind of not conventional. We don't see this style of battery here in the United States. However, the way it's set up, it will use a regular uh, high cranking out lawnmower battery. It's It has enough room. It can be either or. So nothing that I see is like proprietary. I will tell you this too. There's one little thing right here that you can or you may or may not want to do. But uh, right now, we, we just disconnected this right here. So when you put it in reverse, it will not go beep. You beep, 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 beep. No, it just goes beep real loud. Oh. It's very annoying. Uh, I get it, so you know, you don't want to back over nobody, but I don't have a backup on my car. I was gonna say, who are we gonna back up onto? Yeah, it's not like we got a lot of kids. I mean, if you had kids around, it would yeah. be, I'd probably leave it out. Anyway, here's your, your uh, surge tank for your radiator. Here's where you actually, your radiator cap. I checked all this, as soon as we got it, pulled it into the shop and uh, went through everything, checked all the fluids, oil. This is your master cylinder. Uh, these are some sort of solenoid. I don't know what they're for. I never- Do that. Yeah, well, they, they probably start our solenoid or something like that. However, one thing I was impressed with it is the owner's manual does have a full wiring diagram. So it's kind of, some some of these things are some, some side by side, you don't get any kind of support or help. This one, it's got wiring diagrams, troubleshooting. This is ice freezing up. We're having an ice storm right now. So we thought it'd be great to come play in it. So here's the front winch. Uh, I wanna think this winch is 1,500 pounds. I will, maybe it's 2,500 pounds. I'll get back to you. I'll put a little thing across the, across the screen that says 2,500 or 1,500, however much it is. Yeah, I, I, I've studied on this a lot. Let me, let me turn it on and turn the lights on so you can see what it looks like. So that marker lights, right? And then we'll turn this on, your headlights come on. That's low. Low beams, sorry. High beams, they're, the high beams are very bright. Very bright. These actually, right here, they aim real, real close to the ground and these aim way off, so it gives you a nice spread. I like that. So right in the back, look at it. So this one is a, uh, it's road ready. It comes with rear, uh, the cab, it comes with turn signals, left and right turn signals. The It also comes with a rear view mirror, which is required in most states if you're going to have one of these on the road. So you, we can put the license plates on this and we will because Tennessee is very friendly about license plates on side-by-sides. Uh, as long as you stay on rural roads, all you know you can't go down the main road, but anyway. So let's let's talk about the shocks, uh, the back axle. Everything looks really heavy built, and I love the fact that you have adjustable shocks. You can just turn these shocks up or down. If you want it to be stiffer or not, you can turn them uh, up and down. The joints uh, are greasable, uh, and that's something you don't see on many side-by-sides. So these are, built so that they'll last. It's got a regular tailgate, nice size uh, tail, or, you know, bed here that with tie downs, comes with nice tie downs. But I can see us, you know, we're gonna be like running back and forth while we're building. Uh, half the time we always forget something up at the front of the farm. 
this is going to be so handy you mean for that. you're going to forget a lot of stuff well <laughs> we already do forget a lot of stuff but recently if it's way off i'll go get on the tractor and drive the yeah yeah i'll drive with a tractor to the front of the farm to go carry something into the okay. cabin and that's really not what tractor's meant to do better than walking I'm trying to look around see if there's anything else i want to show you i said i, I talked about the fuel Let's, i guess we can look in here this thing is massive and, and it's really thought out like everywhere you look there's a there's a new cubby there's cubbies cubby 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 uh big giant cubby cup holders uh, ever everywhere i look there's something good and you know, something that's been it's been thought out it's not just like uh an accident so let's show you how to look, to look at the engine let me move my That's how easy it is to get the in, get to the engine. The old dipsticks on that side. Um, I'll show it to you later. It's not that big a deal. It has an old dipstick, couldn't you? Um, then again, this is electronic fuel injection. If you can't get it to get to it from this side, then it, you don't have to take anything off to get to the oil filter. A lot, a lot of side by side, you got to like take a bunch of housings and stuff off. Right there's an oil filter. You can get to it with a set of oil filter wrenches, like just a, a pair of pliers and it's really easy to get to and i really like that because some of the other ones we looked at you have to tear half of the uh side by side apart just to change the oil and this one has an oil drain plug onto the bottom take that out drain your oil put the plug back in pop your filter in you're good to go on the air filter is right here when you get ready to change the air filter and it's got a big commercial air filter uh, th this is just a normal commercial air filter there is a there's some screws here you take this front cover off and that that'll pop off and let you service the, uh, the air filter which is not very often like once a year because this is i guess if you're really dusty conditions you might want to do it more but for us what we're going to be doing with it i, I think it'll be fine we're not going to be in the desert mm -hmm. all right you want to ride yeah just so you know the seat's got two little hooks on the back and two spikes on the front What did you do to it? I just gotta figure out how to do it. So it really, that was very dramatic for something that wasn't really that dramatic. I forgot to mention this, but it became very apparent to me when I started driving it, that this has electronic power steering. And that is an option, uh, depending on which model you get. But I'm telling you that the power steering is awesome. As you're watching these videos, because of the way the cameras work and stabilization, it really doesn't show how steep some of this stuff is. This this big horn's a billy goat for sure. I uh, it I. Got it in four-wheel drive, lock, front and rear. And as we go down some of these really steep hills, I never felt top heavy. I always felt like I was in control. So this big horn keeps resistance on the transmission all the time. And what I mean is when you're going downhill, it doesn't release. Some side-by-sides I've used in the past, once the RPMs drop low, it basically disengages and free rolls. So here we're coming into the cabin, but we're coming in through the back trail. And this trail is not completely finished, obviously. Well, our plastic seems to be holding up. So this is definitely one of those places that is steeper than the camera makes it look like. I never once felt uncomfortable or out of control in any way. It just very good feeling, always in control.
So this area is very muddy. This is one of our, our live springs. There's a spring right here that runs year round. So probably wasn't wise to drive over this, but hey, you know, we, we want to try it out. Uh, we'll go ahead and tell you what I think. My first impression, one thing right off the bat is looking at it, it is easy to maintain. Everything is easily accessible. As I said earlier, some side by side you'll get into them and they are, uh, they're hard to work on. This one seems to be like the oil filter is easy to get to, the air filter is easy to get to, the dipstick is easy to get to, the, all of the maintaining it is easy and that's what makes one last a long time. Another thing I like about it is it come with everything. So, so many of the other brands you will buy said, you know, UTV. And then if you want a winch, you got to go drop another thousand dollars, you know, five hundred thousand dollars on the winch system. Or if you want, you know, if you want headlights, you know, extra extra lighting, you got to drop another, you know, two or three hundred dollars on it. Or if you want turn signals, you want to make it road ready, you got to go add all this other elaborate stuff on it. It doesn't come with it standard. This, this comes with it, you know, the cab is the only thing that's extra. Uh, this comes pretty much road ready uh, from the factory. You know, you don't need to do anything but go registered at your local county, you know, your DMV, and you're ready to go. Driving through the hills, um, it's got a very, very low center of gravity. Uh, I am felt very comfortable the whole time. I never felt tippy. The cab sets up high, but it's not heavy. It's just it's just like an ABS plastic, which should last you forever. It's not going to rust out, but it also is not transferring a whole lot of weight up high. So that's that's really good. Um, the whole time we went through those really really steep areas, I never once felt tippy or it was very stable. Felt comfortable you know, the whole way through. Anything else you can think of? I'm glad you are comfortable. It's kind of hard to walk in all this. <laughs> yes. All right. Bring it. Speaking of comfortable, and she's out here walking in the ice and snow to get you guys these shots. So hey, give a big shout out to Tanya, you know, give her a thumbs up saying, hey, thank you for the, thank you for shooting the video. Cause I know I do, I appreciate her doing it. However, uh, in the cab, let's talk about comfort. So the day is about five, 25 degrees out. I, 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 had to I had my gloves off. So inside the cab with just my coat and normal pants, not insulated pants, just some muck boots, normal pants and a pretty heavy jacket, no gloves. I was completely comfortable. My hands are not cold. Uh, that heat puts out enough heat for that situation. Now, if you live in, say, Minnesota and it's 40 below zero, it ain't gonna do nothing for you. It's just not enough heater for it, and it's not what it's meant to be. However, for climates like this, where those, you know, 25 degree to say 50 degree days where you just want a little extra heat, 50 degree a day, you could probably wear a t-shirt inside there and be okay. And that's what it's made for. It's just made for that kind of, that kind of. Now, granted, if you were 40 below zero and that's, you had that heat, it would be better than the one that didn't have heat. So anyway, that's my first thoughts on it. Uh, I, I, this thing is going to be so useful on the farm. You're going to see it constantly on the farm. We'll do a, uh, we'll do a six month review. Uh, we'll do one this summer because it's going to get a ton of review. We also got some really nice, uh, riding courses at Land Between the Lakes, uh, it's a it's a park a national park here of about uh, 11 12 miles from us and it's um like thousands of miles of riding trails so we're going to hit that uh, see what it does on on the trails but pretty much you can already see what it's going to do on the trail i think it's it's a cross between it's a cross between useful work and and play the other thing i want to talk about is parts um uh, bighorn has a full line of you know fully all parts are available uh they have a warehouse in georgia uh you can order parts and get parts the dealers can order parts and get parts uh, and also you will see parts online for these like you know your oil filters there's nothing special about them you can cross reference them into a local wix number napa number whatever you there's 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 nothing special about these oil filters they're just a basically a motorcycle oil filter nothing crazy those parts are readily available. Like I said, the air filter, I showed you the air filter was just a standard, like commercial duty, small engine air filter. That's pretty neat because you can go to a Napa again and pick up an air filter. You don't have to go anywhere special or or have to order in any kind of really expensive filter. It's just a standard commercial grade filter. So I hope you can hear me, it's running, but here's the, the dash. I, I like the dash 
uh, if, a couple things is if you look at the gear shift, do you swing down the gear shift? So whatever you're in lights up. So if you put it in reverse, that, that lights up. Also, if you look back to the dash, we're in reverse, gives you temperature, gives you your uh, how much fuel you got. This is your RPMs. And then there's your overall miles. Um, I haven't set the clock yet. Our, I don't know, is it, if it's maybe right? No, it's not right. Anyway, I don't even know how to set the clock. We'll worry about that later. Uh, voltage tells you what, where you're at in four and five. So let's go. So now I'm in uh, full drive lock. I am in just regular full wheel drive, and now I am two wheel drive. Now I can go ahead and click this button, and you see the little X shows you that the uh, I've locked in the rear differential. So you have all this information available. Uh, also, you can look right here. You have a 12 volt plug, power plug. So if you got like a GPS or something like that, I just now noticed the. So you can turn the light up and down. Hey, thank you so much for watching this review and we'll do more over the next six months or so. We'll, you're going to see this a lot on our channel because we're actually going to use it quite a bit. Uh, if you got a you know like a specific question you want to ask uh, about this side by side, let me know, and I'll try to address it either in a short uh, video or we'll do a, you know pick it up in our long video when we do the next review on it. Listen again, thank you for watching our video. God bless.